What are you doing out of your box? Get in there, go on. There you go. Thank you. Morning, bro. Gonna cook up that eel, eh? Yeah. Woohoo! Damo was blessed yesterday with an eel in the paddock with the floods. Yeah, there's a stream at the bottom and there's a dam at the top. So they come from the sea and they go at the stream and the road and then they wriggle their way up to the dam. But they also live in the dam all year round. And they're probably breeding there too. They've been there forever. And when the floods come, they get washed back down to the creek. And that one there, what happened was it was on its way back down and it obviously got beached as bro. Couldn't go any further. And then you found it and it was just only freshly dead. Yeah, lucky. Mmm, score. This chip that Damo's got in here is from Mike from Wicked Digital Media. When Mike stayed with me, he gifted me a bag of this. It's a hickory. We actually have a load of really good smoking wood around here. We've got kanuka, we've got manuka, we've got beech, and of course we've got apple wood. Uh, but this hickory is quite nice for fish. I prefer for the pork, wild pork and the venison, I prefer the apple smoked wood rather than the fish. And... Although there's nothing wrong with it, and most of you probably prefer for your kahuai and your eel manuka, but mm, manuka's good, but I like the hickory more, and I actually, for doing eel, for me, my pick would actually be hickory, or it would be peach wood or pear wood. Apple's not bad either, but we've experimented over the years a lot, but hickory's really nice. Two bits for your base, and then your fire starter, what are you using? You've got a fire starter there? Cool, put that on top, that'll keep off the wet ground, then you, yep, there you go, a couple of those, and then you, then you find stuff on top, you'll be laughing, that'll do it mate. Fires mostly fail because this stuff here is too thick, Yeah. beautiful, that's, that's, that'll be great, yep. that's the starter, that's, right? yeah, that's the starter there. I wonder what smoked duck would be like, eh, you reckon they'd be alright, hmm? Yeah? Did you put any salt on it at all when you were hanging out, or just dry? Nah, just dry. Should be sweet. A lot of guys put sugar on, but you don't need it, mate. That'll go pretty quick, bro. That's pretty good, man. You smashed it there nicely. Yeah, two on either side. Yeah, two on either side, bro. Yeah. yeah the other side there, be good. That's enough, and then just feed it slowly. You can put yeah. that on top now, you'll be good to go. Such a nice, simple setup. Simple as, bro. Just cheap from the warehouse. I've cooked heaps in it. It won't take it long at all before that starts to smoke with that heat under it. Yep. So yeah, pop your lid on. Nice. Oh yeah, she's away. Damon and I are just saying that outdoors is so much better than cooking in the kitchen. Mm. The clean up is virtually non-existent because <laughs> you the only thing you got to scrub is your rack that you've got your heel on if you yeah. want to, yeah. or you can leave it we're out all, in nature. We're all after this one, eh? Yeah, or we can leave it out for the doggies to lick and <laughs> yeah. come back to it. <laughs> Because the sun's on it all day and that cleans everything. So you really got your, your fish on the rack and salt and you eat it with your fingers. You don't need plates, eh? Nah. Pick it up. And there's no dishes to wash. And you're outside and it's fun to cook. And it smells good. It, there's no worrying about splattering on your bench or having to worry about chipping the good bloody crockery or <laughs> clean stuff in the dishwasher afterwards or in the sink or scrub. None of that, Jesus. None of that shit. Just... Outside, enjoying the smell of the, it's a mixture of beech and pine, but it smells really good with the the eel and the hickory smoke. This is a nice place to sit. Now I can hear the, I can hear the eel sizzling a little bit now. Uh, hear that, the uh, sizzling? Because uh -huh. there's a lot of fat in the eel. Popping the crackle. Well, yeah, it'll be bloody good. You want to turn that maybe now? Yeah. There's not a lot of smoke going in there, bro. Uh -huh. It is a, it's a cold cook. It might be needed a little more fire. Yeah. Give them more turn. And then I'm going to salt the back. That looks pretty good, bro. Yeah, yeah what you do is, um, if you score it next time and salt it, it makes it crackle up. Uh -huh. See, this, these skins here are already starting to burn there. That one there. The rest is pretty good. This one's crackling up good. Mm. Yeah, she's nice. Yeah. away. Maybe she likes some more heat, this one. Yeah. 
Just keep an eye on it because you don't want to burn that foot, that uh, bro. It can't yeah. be too much. I think you want to keep an eye on it and then have your coffee once it's cooked, eh? Don't take you off the ball when you're cooking fish. Don't get too close. Ducky, Super Ducky doesn't really know about the fire. She's put a beak in the fire a few times and learnt the hard way. I do grow some food down here. Obviously I've got uh, native plants and the kawakawa uh, here, which is um, quite prolific. It's actually got the seed on now, coming up. So you don't harvest kawakawa when it's in seed. Uh, well, Māori never used to do that, so I don't know why, but I always follow what Māori have done because they are the bushmen of New Zealand. They know they've, they've had years and years of living in the native, so they know stuff that, for a good reason, it's not just something they made up, it's with good logic, so I don't harvest that when it's in the seed. Uh, I've got stinging nettle, which I've had for ages, and I keep it in a pot. This is not the onga onga, which is a native one, this is just one that uh, is the English one, and you can see a lot of this died off, you can probably take that out, and I use this for a tea, very high in iron, and I keep it in a pot because otherwise it can spread, and then it becomes a pest. Right beside me, my native bush, I've got my chickens in the paddock over here. This is the other side. And they used to be able to roam through here, but they absolutely destroyed the forest floor. I found this good score jelly ear. Now jelly ear's got some real good therapeutic uh, properties. And oh, there's a cracker down there. Look at the size of that one there. That's a beauty. Oh, we'll take that one, we'll harvest that. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, anti-carcinogenic genic, so against cancer but for um, lowering blood pressure uh, for getting cholesterol down there's a lot of papers done on this it grows wild in the bush, turkey tail you've got to know what you're getting though because um, they can heal you and they can also kill you the fungus as uh, one of my mates uh, Jason said over in the Tucky Tucky mate that looks good did you put something on that? it's gone dark yeah yeah but, um... Oh. Meant to be more ingredients, but I just wanted to try this because I've seen that I've been oh, wanting yeah. to do that for ages. Oh. Japan, that's how the Japanese do it. Right. They put like this thing called murin or mirin. Right. I have seen those. Seen how we use it. Yep. They use sugar there. Uh huh. Yep. What's the verdict? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to think it was just lay in the paddock. It's a Simon Walker knife going through it beautifully. Oh man, crispy skin. I can hear you crunching it. Mm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Oh, well, I'll let you chew. So you're going to give some of that away to people, yeah? Well, yeah, I'm only going to have a small amount. Oh, cool. I've uncracked it. This is the uh, all the net that good bastard Troy gave me. It's four metres wide, and there's 200 metres of it. Mm, wow. How are we going to do this, guys? You can hang out with me while I'm working, mate. Yes, you can. You come up for a pad, eh? We're going to put the net up. Yes, we are. Good boy. He loves a pat, don't you, eh? Come on. Pace, you can stay there. You've already had a walk twice today. No, you can stay there, mate. That's one way to do it. Just to keep the bloody sparrows out. There she goes. How much my neighbours spent on nets for their cherries. Look, they go right over to the corner there. They go right down here. Go right across, then the paddock way over there, and then you've got all the infrastructure to hold it up. They've got a lot of wires. Bixie's picking apples out of the tree. Super duck's trying to get on the act. He's going along here getting the last remnants of apple. These are the neighbour's sheep down the road in the olive grove. Pretty tame, really, aren't they? Come up to see me. G'day, mate, how you going? Nice looking wee lambs. See the rings on their tail where they've been uh, lashed right as well. Here comes all the other ones. Run down here. <laughs> Just run around, eh? Happy ears. Lots of little lambs. It's a good time of the evening. Old mate trying to get a drink there. Very frisky. Up there, just underneath those waddles, there's some there. Some have lost their tails and others haven't. That tail's just about ready to drop off this fella here. 
Got one black eye, how cool is that? Look at that, what a paint job on that fella there. Got one black eye. That's neat. Hey mum, how you doing? Clearly these guys look after their sheep really well, they're in good nick. There's old black eye, going over there. Not too old. When I was living in Germany, working there, I used to buy premium lamb and hog it, and I bought it cheaper, the export quality, than you could buy it here as a Kiwi in New Zealand. Isn't that crazy? That's how it used to be. And I enjoyed it, and consequently I ate a lot of it because it was such good tuck. It was so cheap. Kiwis get ripped off with meat, they really do. Starting to stretch it out and uh, finding a few wee holes. But hey, it was free, so it's a bit of a patch up job there. Going to carry on down, stretching it. Five o'clock in the evening and I've only got one strip up and I've realised I've got a lot more work to do. I've got to frame it more than I had. I thought I could get away with just putting lines across like this to hold it up. But in fact, what I need to do is I need to put struts in the middle like I've done here as well with a T-section to support it. Uh, off these wire tars and brace them as well because it's just not enough for the weight. So, got more structural work to do down here. Live and learn, never done it before. Uh, that's me and Super Ducky today saying see you later and uh, try and be good. If you can't be good, be careful. We'll see you next video and show you how we're progressing with uh, my big garden. I'm really uh, very, very passionate about this. I've never had a big garden. And particularly never had a garden that was bird proof. So, Super Ducky, that means you're a bird, you won't be in here, mate. Although, I might let Super Ducky hang around because she gets a lot of slugs. Apparently, hedgehogs get a lot of slugs too, so rather than killing them when I see them because they are a pest, uh, I might just release them and keep them inside the garden so they can't get out. I don't know. They call them the garden's friend in the UK for a good reason. They kill a lot of slugs. Right, we'll see you in the next video. See you later. Time for one of Chloe's cups of coffee. Mmm, coffee.